Hello there and welcome to my RT Corner here on YouTube. My name's Angela and amongst other things I'm an artist. Well I think I am, probably am, we all are deep down. So um, I hope you're all doing well. It's Saturday the 25th of June as I record this and the weather forecast is rain on and off and when they mean when they say rain they mean bucketing it down in huge amounts and then stopping for a bit and then starting again. So that is rain and on, on and off, but all's fine, all's well. It'll pass like everything. Um, so I just want to say thank you for everybody who's subscribed, particularly the new subscribers. I doesn't mean that I don't value my older subscribers any the less. I value you all greatly. And if you haven't subscribed, but you like what you see, then please consider subscribing and um, click the button. It doesn't cost you anything at all to do this. Okay? Not a penny. Nada. Nothing. And um, thank you also for the lovely comments, for the thumbs ups, for the shares and the shout outs. I appreciate all of that very much as well. Not very good at promoting myself, so it's lovely when other people do it for me. In fact, promote self-promotion? <laughs> don't really know. So... <laughs> Quietly, softly, softly, word gets around and that's all that matters. So anyway, um, in front of you, you can see, on front of me here, you can see I have this um, bird I drew um, a couple of videos ago with the flowers around it. And I just don't know what to do with myself today. It's a weird day. My emotions are all over the place. And I just thought this would be quite nice to do to try and add colour. I think I've scanned this in. She says, going, I'm not too sure. Um, either way, it's no problem. If I mess it up, I can always redraw it in a similar way or whatever. So scan it in and draw it digitally or whatever. So it's fine. All's fine and good in the world. And to do that, somebody suggested, I'm sorry, I can't remember who suggested it. I think it was Daisy Tales. Um, but she'd seen some of our British kingfishers. And kingfishers are the most beautiful coloured birds. They're sort of like, depending on how the light strikes their feathers on their wings, they can be turquoise to a rich blue and they're quite metallic and iridescent. And then their other plumage is golds and orange, a lot of gold there. So real complementary colours, real vibrant and bright. So I'm going to use those as the basis of the colours for the bird. And you can see what I've chosen here. I've got my carrying brush markers out. So I've got this one, which is um, oh, it's amber. There we go. I've got gold, I've got royal blue, I have turquoise and I've got cool aqua. And I think they'll work fine. I say I think they'll work fine. I'm not too sure about that one. I'm not too sure about that at all. But we'll see. We will. So let's get on with this. I think I'll start with the feathers first. I'll put the orange and yellow out of the way. I don't know how much of this I'm going to get done. But off to my right here. I'll move my brushes out the way. Pop them there so I can find them. I've got my, oh, it's a cutting plate it is for some kind of die cutting machine but it's white plastic and it works perfectly fine and it's yeah it's flat but I don't spray water on it so there's some of the royal blue going down. Um, I'll put the turquoise next. I'm going to leave some space between them because I can then mix them on the palette if I want but I know these paints will, they're water soluble in it they are. Um, or, or watercolour inks. There's quite a big difference between this pale one and the turquoise but there's nothing in between really. Um, but then the same could be said of the others which is why it'd be nice to work with these possibly. Um, I've said often a uh, colour like this is my kryptonite. <laughs> Any kind of colour is my kryptonite. So let's just see what happens and see where it leads. And um, I'm going to start, oh I've got some, you can see there's some pencil on here. Now I want to be removing the pencil before I start to add colour rather than leave it till afterwards. Because depending on the medium I use, it could get stuck there. And also adding water to the paper would um, make it a bit more fragile. Okay, so if I start, I'm going to, no, actually I'm going to start the darker colours 
and I'm going to make sure that my Quite nice. I'm going to have to work in um, sections really and see how this is going to work. That's, yeah, that'll work quite nicely actually. Um, let's start at the bottom then and add this, this down. Such lovely colours. Then I can add the blue into that and let it do its thing. It'd be quite nice. I'm not too worried about the distress ink colour in the background because I know that it's, even though it looks quite colourful, it will dissolve in the colours and you will barely see it at the end. So I'm all for that. I'm trying to drop some more colour in, saturate the colour on this particular feather. I'm going to add a bit more there. Just drying my brush off as I do this, so that um, I'm not adding more water. I just want to really add some colour here. Gosh, blind me on the on the camera, on the screen. These look really vibrant, a lot more than they do to my eyes. Okay, let's carry on doing this then. So these are just such beautiful colours. They're actually some of my favourite colours. So thank you. I'm sure, it was Daisy Tales for suggesting this. Oh, I, I do listen to people's suggestions, I do honestly. don't always act on them, but I do listen to them. Um, but this is it's getting the um, intensity of the colours correct on each feather, I suppose, so that they actually look like they belong together. Put more of the green there, perhaps. That'll do. They're not going to be identical because, you know, God help, that'd be a miracle. But again, you never know with me, things happen and suddenly a penny will drop and I'll go, oh, that's how you do it then, is it? Well, I can hope, can't I? With these pens, the inks in them go such a long way, just like with the eco lines, because they really are intensely coloured. I can't say pigmented because with these they're dye based so they don't have pigment in them it's dye so they've got a lot of the colour in and not so much of the you know um, solvent the water that they're carried in. They're absolutely beautiful. Like I do tend to go for well it varies. I do like bright and vibrant colours. I'm going to pop my um, tissue on the other side a moment so that I can um, reach this. Yeah, I've got that one there. So that'd be lovely. And then I can pick up some of the royal blue and drop it in at the top and just let the, where it's damp just help to blend it together. That little bit more blue. Just a damp brush just to help blend a little bit more. It's a thick line on this side, so I'm going to try and blend it that way. That's a bit better. So I'm going to do this on the outside. I'm going to make use of the lighter aqua colour. So this particular colour here for the base of the feathers, the tips, and I've just noticed there's some pencil on these ones so I've lost my opportunity now to remove that pencil. And then I'm going to use some of the, the turquoise at the top to try and get a lot of that because I want that contrast. Oops, as I spread over into the petal, the petal, the feather next door. So I'll, oh, I might as well do them side by side. They're going to spread one into another anyway, I think. Knowing me, my cack handedness with um, particularly wet media, coloured media, brushes, brushes, that's the word I'm looking for. 
Perhaps it's just me, I feel that way, but I said today's not exactly the best day for me. I'm feeling um, so that under the weather emotionally. It's one of those days where it happens to us all. We all get emotional weather and I'm quite tickety boo, but at the same time there's you know there's something troubling me. And I know what it is and it's just a matter of Letting it work itself through. Not holding on to it, but letting it work itself through would be lovely, which is what I'm trying to do. And art always helps. I started a new lettering sketchbook last night. Um, I've got one of the Sea White All Media. Actually, I bought two of them because I, I hadn't got a spare one in my stash and I don't know why. I usually keep a spare, just in case. Um, it may have gone in the gift to my friend last week, which is not a problem because, you know, they're in need of good things in life. So, um, not saying that other people aren't, but, you know, there's somebody there I can actively help. Possibly. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder. If I do help, I make things worse at times. Whether it's for them or for me. So, I try. That's all I can do. Anyway, so. We're getting some lovely, lovely colours going on here. Now I'm going to move to the tips of these feathers. And I did notice on a photograph that on the Kingfisher... The feather tips are often quite dark blue, so that's what I'm going to work with here. I'm going to reverse the colours a little bit here and put the teal the other end, like so. I say teal, turquoise, so I get a different range of colours going on here. And I think I'm going to just have to let them be if they're slightly different in intensity, then so be it. Um, do I need to dampen this brush again though? I'm using quite a fine brush here. I'm using a 3O, 3 slash O, so it's really quite fine. I don't know why I'm picking that one up. Um, but it's because I know I've got tiny little spaces to get into. I have got a couple of bigger ones. If I try to use the bigger ones, I know I'll make a right pig's ear of it. Right there, uh, so I need a bit more of the turquoise on this one. That's nice. That's working. I think it's working anyway. I'm never quite sure. I'm hypercritical of my own work. And if you hadn't noticed that, if you're new to the channel, you'll get used to this, but I can be hyper, hypercritical. Especially on days today, like today. Um, my confidence in myself has taken a bit of a knock. Not necessarily artistically, but things spill over. I start questioning myself about things. And it's not just today, I think pennies dropped yesterday and I'm working through it, so I'll be fine. It's... Um, it's a familiar process to me. Um, when I learnt well, um, as I had therapy for complex post-traumatic stress for several years, and I'm much better than I was. It doesn't mean I'm healed. I don't think you ever can be um, fully, but you can get to a point where you're good enough. <laughs> where hopefully I'll learn not to do quite so much in the way of self-destructive behaviours. I'm not sure how that's working out yet. It's too early to tell. <laughs> yeah, though I have been out of therapy for three years. Over three, yeah, just over three years. And um, pandemic means that I guess my worst self-destructive, um, or a couple of my self-destructive activities are I avoid people. If that's self-destructive, 
people scare me for lots of reasons. Um, but there's also this um, thing I have where uh, it's safe to be indoors, it's safe to be at home. And this is the lightest blue there. And I will, I am going to look in the box. I just need to move my keyboard. I'm a keyboard on top of the brush marker box. I've got a, I've got a blue that's somewhere in between these. So that would be quite nice actually to use with the aqua. Keep that one up. This one is cyan. There's a couple of different colours there, but I think the cyan will do nicely. I think it will play nicely at the top here. This is what I like about watercolour markers, or water, you know, water-based paints, is that you don't need a whole host of colours to get a gradient to cut, you know, a gradient like you do with alcohol markers. But then I like alcohol markers very much. Okay, I just need a bit more of this blue at the top because it's not quite blue enough up there to make a difference, but it will be. Like so. So let's get some of this. Got too much water on my brush. So let's see if we can just get this going. That bit of blue at the top. Sure, that's working actually because of the um, I think that blue and the, the teal is making a very similar color to oh, the blue and the aqua is making a similar color to the turquoise. Just put the blue in and see what that looks like. And then I can add some of this pale aqua at the bottom, perhaps. Not sure. Um, I'll think about this. I think I may come back at the top there with some of the darker blue, to be honest. Just to add, because that I would need some shadow there because these do overlap at the top. And then I've got some whiter bits here and there, so I'm just using a damp brush just to move colours around. And then here, let's have a look. A bit better. And like all all water-based colours, as they dry, their vibrancy um, disappears somewhat because they water helps them to reflect light a lot more. But as they dry, they sink into the paper as well a little bit, and you you lose some of that surface vibrancy. Okay, so I am going to use some of this lovely dark blue. top of these feathers as well, just a hint of it I think, just to give me some contrast between this blue and the, and the, t uh, and the turquoise. I'm going to try and stick to these colours. I don't want to add any others. Um, and just rely on the intensity of colours to and the, the gradients to give that variation in colour that we're looking for. Okay. Right, I'm going to give this a moment to dry before I come back to do any more. So I'll be back in a moment. Oh, perhaps not. I just noticed that this here is rather, it's rather greeny and insipid, isn't it? Okay, let's have a look and see if I can just get a bit more colour in here. A bit more of that blue would be quite welcome, I think. Yeah, that works. That's a bit better. A bit more balanced, perhaps. So there. So I'll be back in a moment. I'm just going to let that dry before I do anything else. Okie dokes, there we are, back again. Last 
few I've just realized I could have done the tail feathers because I'm going to do the tail feathers the same colors but we'll have a look this bit at the top of the wing I think I want to use the lightest the aqua color there and just get some hints of the other colors in it perhaps I'm quite sure how I'm going to do this or approach this because that quite pale colour and it does mix with the distress inks to give a yellow uh, greenish hint to it and that's why the turquoise blue penny dropped which is why the um the turquoise and the blues are beginning to look similar because of that yellowish colour of distress ink perhaps a little bit more than I think there is on there but that's quite nice and I think on the top I'm going to add some the turquoise just on the top there. I keep the bottom as light as I can within reason and then right on the very top I'm just going to add some this blue and just let it spread as it will. So that's one of the lovely things even on this all media paper, it may not be watercolour paper, but it works quite well with water-based media. <coughs> you can't use as much water with it as you can with others, but you know, as with you can with watercolour paper or perhaps some mixed media papers, but it's good enough for me. Just get, picking up some of the dark blue because I do want to, I do want it really dark at the tip so it is differentiated. It's a big word for today from the rest, so it stands out. And I am just going to do all of this section in the deep blue for now. I'll come back. I will add a different colour at the top, but I think I'll blend them. The paler blue would be quite nice here. Oh yeah, that works. I like that. So if I can just get some paint right into the tips and corners, nooks and crannies here. Brush is a bit dry. So okay, let's carry on and do these. So I'm using the dark blue. Tip. I think I need just a bit more on this one. That's great. And here. Question is, will we get to the yellows in this video? Possibly, because I may just pop this to one side or let the wings be and start to do something with the chest. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So the Fanciful Birds book is coming along okay. I'm going to have a break from it again today. Um, ooh, wrong colour. I um, you know, it's, Today is one of those days where I think if I try to do that, if I'm not in the right frame of mind, I'll end up getting frustrated and making a mess of things and um, I'll then have to go back and redo what I've done. So sometimes it's better to take a little bit of time in order to save time, if that makes sense. Um, I'm not on as tight a deadline as I was. I've got all of next week and a couple of days the week after to get it finished, which is brilliant. And will work in my favour, I think. And um, we already have a plan for the next book. Oh gosh, I've put this in the wrong colour. So, or an idea for it. And actually, it was one of my ideas which was accepted, which is great. Yay! And I think um, you'll quite enjoy it when I let you know what it is. But I can't tell you until it's all been officially announced. And oh, yeah, you know, it, it, you know, what can I say? But I'm quite excited about it and looking forward to it. 
um, and uh, I have lots of work to do in terms of sketches and working things out beforehand, which is always fun. And often it spills over into my other work, like here, you know, birds. I think this is the first bird I've, well, it's the, I think it's the first bird I've done with, um, on YouTube. Um, as a tutorial, I think it's the first one I've done as any kind of tutorial other than perhaps showing. Actually, no, I don't think I've ever drawn a bird. Have I? I may have done. I know I've done some in other books, colouring books in the past. But, um, Fanciful Birds book is definitely a mixture of kinds of styles, which is, well, I think that's me all over. I think I have many voices, many styles for whatever I do. And today I think I'll be going back after this to um, my hand lettering sketchbook. I'm part way through one thing. And sometimes I, I letter what's going on in my head, hopefully in a way that people won't get to what that is. But, oh gosh, I've put this the wrong way round on this one. Not a problem. We can, we can alter it and make it better. So, there we go. So that's quite nice. And, um, so I've just got those bits to do there. Okay, let's have a look here, because I do want to get some of the darker blue on the feathers. I'll show you in a moment my palette here and you can see, you can see, it looks like I've used an awful lot of colour and I haven't really used as much as you might think I have, which doesn't make a lot of sense if I stop and think about it. The colour tends to bead up on the plastic so instead of being like a thin layer it all bunches up over time um, but even then the amount that goes down is just tiny in comparison to you know how much is in the pens so I definitely would buy these again if I ever run out of them not sure I'm not sure if you can buy them open stock I think I hope I can because I suspect that there'll be a, quite a, you know, a few colours that I would use a lot and others that I wouldn't use quite so much of. So I'd run out of some regularly, I think. These are colours that I would, most probably. Let's get that lovely blue here. Now I'm not trying to paint this like a kingfisher but I'm just taking those the colour inspiration from that particular bird. Years ago I used to fish. Not proud of it, you know I'm vegetarian. Um, I never caught them to kill them, they always went back. Um, in this country it's called coarse fishing and of course the fish are really pretty but I was never bothered whether I actually caught any fish. It was more to do with me having a reason to go out and about. You know, sketchbooks, I suppose, art has, um, in time has replaced that, though I don't do much of that now still. Um, Covid and the knock-on effects of you know, being on my own so much for so long. But, um, you know, realization on really you know various things like the um how 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 aware I am of how nervous I am around um people out in the world in the real world as it were it's um always was but I just never realized how bad it was it's not until you you realize you don't have something you can see what it is isn't it anyway so but there was a set of lake, it was a lake I like to go to in the Forest of Dean, which is just across the English border in a county called Gloucestershire. So it's about an hour, an hour and a bit's drive from me. It's not far. 
I used to load the car up in the summer. I used to go there after school until close to sunset. It was beautiful and I'd often be the only person there. And I was never worried about being on my own there. I was there in daylight. Sometimes there'd be other fisher people there or people walking. But many a time it was just being there in peace and quiet, being forced to sit down and be still. Um, I was forever on the move, forever on the run, forever on the go. Um, you know, it's one of those things, it's uh, uh, a coping strategy that people can develop for anxiety or depression or in my case complex post-traumatic stress because that had elements of all of things like that, any kind of emotional or mental illness. And, um, and it was a place where I could just sit and be and watch the world go by and it was lovely. So that was my main reason and I was quite happy if no fish landed on my hook. In fact, the last number of times I went fishing I basically fed the fish as I bent the hooks over and just used them to hold bait on there. And it was just the fact that the fish were eating the bait would, you know, that was enough for me. Um, water bailiff found that and thought I was absolutely bonkers. You know, paying all this money for my, you know, my ticket to fish and oh, all you're doing is feeding the fish. And I said, my money, my choice, you know. And um, he tutted and went away and eventually I never went fishing again and, you know, it, it, was, it, it was what it was. And, but the, the point of this story, other than my, um, you know, tales of, you know, we all do things that perhaps sometimes we regret later in life. But, the, you know, as I look back, I can see the reason for it. And that doesn't mean, you know, you all have to make your own minds up about such things. It's just that it, it just didn't sit well any longer because I realised that despite what people were saying, fish are sentient, they do have feelings and I really didn't want to hurt another living thing. I never have really. Um, so um, anyway, the point of the story is I sat there with the rods out one day. Because you leave your rods out, it's not active fishing, I was fishing for carp which are beautiful, beautiful fish. And um, on the end of my rod was a kingfisher. And not just that day, but many days I went there to be the only one with a rod out with a kingfisher on the end. Now, whether that was because I was the only female or because the kingfisher wasn't scared of me or, or whatever, I don't know. But it was absolutely beautiful. And so they are one of my favourite birds. And I... I, I, create, I formed quite a strong bond with that kingfisher, I can tell you, in its way. And um, I used to have squirrels. Squirrels were swines there. They, there was this big old wily carp, and I mean, it was huge. And it would often, you'd often see it down one end of the, the lake where you couldn't fish, you, there wasn't space to get there. But trees all around it, this, this lake was surrounded by trees, it was beautiful. And um, the, the squirrels would go up there. And you'd see them when the acorns were on the trees, taking the acorns off and throwing them down at the carp, sort of like terrorising the carp. Except what they were really doing was feeding it, because carp like. Um, they eat acorns and things as well, so all was good in the world, I think. Message there. So I'm using this lighter blue to fill in these sections here and we are going to have a greenish colour at the end because I'm going to leave it mixed with the distress inks. This gives it that little hint of something a bit different, perhaps needs a little bit more blue paint or dye ink. Oh how do you describe it? It's, it's I'm using it like paint or like an ink. But it's lovely. Whatever it is it's lovely. So, that's a bit different. So yeah, so I've got a particular fondness for kingfishers and they're so fast. And they catch these little fish so quickly. It's absolutely amazing to watch them. And um, I did. And thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, it's always quite 
quite relaxed on my own but if any person turns up thinking back that's when I got really nervous so there we go there's my there's the wind and most of the tail I do want to do some more of the tail and what I think I'm going to do I'm going to use some of the darker blue in these top sections I will go back and add some depth of colour to these I'm just going to fill it with fairly or quite similar colours there I'm just going to add some darkness towards where there's some overlap that's the, that hint of shadowing along the sides perhaps a little bit it'll be what it, it is what it is and you know I'm no expert at adding colour but that's for sure let's see if I I cannot mess this up so much I think for the next section I'm going to mix some of this these two colours together perhaps in the centre so this is the turquoise and the royal blue because I want to get something that's somewhere in between the two of them I think I've managed that I think that has faded from one into another isn't it well you know we're getting that mixture there Again, I'm just putting some darkness on the outside of each of these sections and underneath a bit there. I'm just going to add a bit more of the blue so I can just darken this there and there. And the channel between them, just to pick this up. Now this is dry here, I can almost dry brush on the top so I've got quite saturated colour but with a dry brush so I've got some shadow and highlight going on in those sections and this lower sections I'm going to use the the turquoise colour almost entirely so look and see what we can do here I'm going to use a slightly damp brush just to pick some of that colour up from the end and move it back to make it that little bit lighter. And then I'm going to use some of this darker colour here again underneath here, here and here. And just down the sides where the it looks like we've got a channel there between the leaves just leaves feathers just bring those out so that's quite nice this area here i'm going to do the same as i did on the top of the the wing i'm going to put some of this paler aqua color down okay it might go a little bit greenish towards the tip and I'm fine with that because it will match that one there. So I've got that. I'll add a bit more of this colour in at the top. But I'll also add some of the blue as well. I'm going to just feather some down. And perhaps a bit of this as well just to darken that up. So, so how's that all looking? What do you think? I think it could be doing okay. I think it could. Okay, um, these bits here I do want to put in some of the yellow. So if I move this around, I'll hopefully not put my hand into this. So that's the gold colour. This is the amber which is quite orangey, but I think I'm going to need, I'm just going to move my keyboard here, slightly more orangey colour. I think this is, is this one orange? Yeah, this one is just orange, so it's a slightly deeper orange, and I will get a, an orangey red. This is fire red, so 
perhaps let's have a look at the different red what colour red is that one that one is red that might be better i'll plop some of that there it's more of a red that's better so i'm just going to start popping these back in because i won't need them today but i will need them in another session so i'm going to do this because if i do these now i'll know where i am because I can get myself into a right pickle very easily with these. They'll put away, right safe, that's great. Okay, so I'm just going to start adding some of these, these yellows here. I'm going to make sure that my brush is nice and clean. I haven't got any hints of blue on it. And that any drops of water around the top of my jar, because I tend to use those for just dampening my brush, are now clear of colour. So I'll do this one first. You can see how bright gold that is. But I do want to use a hint of orange to the side just to darken it. Perhaps a little bit more than I've used. And there. So I think that'll work quite nicely. There we go. And then I'm going to put little bands of yellow here. In hindsight perhaps I could have used these colours around the blues and greens of the wing and in hindsight it might have been wise if I'd done some of this digitally so I could have seen what I wanted to do but I'm not the wisest person when it comes to adding colour. I always hope in the end that I might actually think things through properly instead of working intuitively but Somehow I think that's not going to change. And I just have to trust myself that I won't make too much of a mess of things. So we've got some gold and yellow there. I also want to give it a little gold beak, I think. On a kingfisher, the beak is so much longer than this bird's. So I'm going to use the yellow just to there and a hint of that orange at the bottom just to give that depth of colour shadow there. there. Okie dokes. Then on its head, I think I'm going to use for the crown of its head, I think I'll use these lovely blues and greens again. So there will be areas where I will use these colours without a shadow of a doubt. Okay, so I use that one. I'm going to use the cyan next to darken this down here. I'm going to keep the top light. Magic, there's light hitting that, so I want this to be nice and light. And then we can gradually just darken this up down here. And then we can finally add a little bit of that darkest blue. Perhaps a bit too much. But we can use water just to help to blend this in. And get smooth colour. So that's quite nice. And I'm tempted to make the rest of the head. Not the stripy bit, but the rest of the head here. This lovely light blue colour. The aqua. Need a bit more water than that, Angela. Bigger areas, more water needed. Should have used a bigger brush, I think is the um, message here. I'm just picking up some more of that aqua colour. It's beginning to get quite yellowy where I'm moving the, um, or greeny where I'm moving the distress ink, but I'm fine with that. Distress ink is, you know, it's part and parcel of, of how I've coloured this. I had wanted it to move, if I thought about it, I could have gessoed over it to keep it there, but it's fine. So here I'm going to use that lovely cyan along the bottom, which will help to diminish some of the greeniness perhaps. I don't mind the greeniness, but I'd like some real blueness, what I'm trying to say here. 
and then some of the turquoise can go in. Again, I'm going to pick up, just dampen my brush and I'm going to use, I think I'm going to make a pig's ear with this because I really could have done with using a bigger brush. But I've done it now and I have to live with the consequences of my actions. It may work out fine in the end. Just get a slightly bigger brush. I've got an O2 here, or 2 here rather, size 2. Um, just get some of this. There we go, that's all a bit better now. Lesson. <laughs> to be learned. Okay, so I want some of this lovely rich blue. Oh gosh, that's a lot of rich blue at the bottom. But it's doing its magic, it's mixing into the damp areas all on its own, which is what I want it to do, really. These are so much easier to work with than watercolours. They, they really are. And then, I'm not sure what I want to do here and here. The others. I may use yellows and reds. I can't do anything now until that has dried because I don't want the yellows to bleed into the blues because that would make a mess. I can see where I need to add just a bit more here and here just to run there and here just to fill some little gaps in. Underneath here, I think I may go with put some of this orange in. Orange and ready colour, I think, would work nicely here. So I'm picking up some of the amber, not the darkest orange, but the amber. So I'm just filling this in. I'm making it quite dark towards the edges, even though I'm going to come back in with other colours. My brush a little rinse because in the middle here I am going to put some yellow and let that mix through. That's nice. Now I have got this lovely rich orange which I think I'll pop to the sides. And try to keep preserve some of that lovely orange and the yellow in the middle. Don't want this to go too far. Do want it. That's better. Dab it in, let it mix within. Send it. That's really glowing, isn't it? This will look so much better once I've done the other channels there, I think. And then here. I want to do the same. I want to use, oops, if I pop that in there. No. I want to use the yellow to fill this in and so on. But these, I'm not sure what to do about them. I've got, I have got options here because I could add colour to them and once they dry, I could use a clear glaze pen, which is a Sakura pen. And it go, when it dries, it dries to a hard, waterproof, clear, shiny, plastic finish. And that will seal in the colour underneath. Um, gesso isn't an option because gesso will... Um, colour will stick to it. I could use a clear gel medium, a, a gloss one. I've got a semi-gloss, I've got a satin one there. That actually might be best because then... I know from past experience watercolour, I don't think watercolour sticks to it, I'm going to have to check that. But that may be a way, so if I colour these first, then I can colour everything else there. I haven't got any masking fluid, masking medium for this, so I'm going to have to, I could either order some or I could think creatively about it. Masking, masking fluid is icky stuff anyway. Uh, I do not like it. I think you can get it actually in little bottles with needle noses now, so I, or pens. So I might I might look at that and see what I can get. But I'm not going to do anything more here until 
I've made my mind up about that. I could put these channels in. How are we doing? We try, we try. But I need something that's distinctly different here from this one. So I think I might use the red here. At the edges. Just need that hint more water, that little bit more water on my brush. Need more colour on this end. A lot more colour on this end, too much water on my brush, not enough colour. Now I have dotted that into that blue there, but it's going to have to stay there now. So I'll take some of that off. Go back to this orange, this amber here. And let's see if that's fine. We can get that to blend one into another. Hopefully I'll be able to. And that will give a distinctly different edge there. There's some bleeding into that coloured, that yellowy section as well. I'm fine about that. It is what it is. And then in this section as well, I'm going to do the same kind of thing. I'm going to use the amber for much of it. I'm going to leave a little bit at the top there that will be... So come back and add some yellow there. So let's just get some more colour in. Let's pick up some of the yellow and add that there. And then at the bottom here I'm going to add something that is distinctly on the reddish side. And perhaps even more red around towards the back there. So that's quite nice. That adds a nice, really fiery contrast. And then um, this one here, I think this band here, I'd rather like to be the blues and um, teals and so on, I think. Because I'm next to this, I'm going to do the um, yellows and so on for the uh, whatever colour background I'm going to do. I'm not entirely sure what colour backgrounds I'm going to do there or colours yet. Um, so may just need a bit of finagling about it. Okay, some darker colour here and definitely down here, perhaps along the bottom edge, just to add a feeling that this might be three-dimensional, because everything's looking a bit flat at the moment. Again, with this one, I think I need to go back and add something right along the bottom, just to give that darker colour, as if we've got some shadow going on there. And perhaps some of that red down here, if I can pick some up. Just to some blending there. Just to give that sense of dimensionality. And I also want to put, this is where it's going to get a bit on the tricky side for me. Hint of darker colour. So if we've got a shadow here, that's all I want. Just lift the eye up that little bit. So I think that's where I'm going to leave it for today. I hope this has made sense to you. I said I'm not exactly the world's best when it comes to use of colour and understanding colour and watercolours and so on. Um, I take quite a simplistic approach and tend to treat them a bit like their alcohol markers on digitally colouring. But um, 
I'm quite I'm quietly pleased with this so far. I think the bird will end up looking brilliantly. I like these the colour combination. I'm glad I've introduced some reds into it because the red, the reds and the oranges are really what are the complementary colours of those the turquoises and blues. They will, you know, vibrate against each other. I know I can intensify the colours if needed. Um, I like the way that some of the distress ink has coloured the Karen markers here to give that little bit of greeniness and the same along here. So that's quite nice because let's see if I can explain this, my understanding of this, is that if we use if we mix the same colours together, then you've got colours that go together. So I haven't got this on my palette, but as I'm picking it up with the colour there. It's mixing in and it's creating a harmonious blend of colour. I think that's the best way I can describe it. So it sort of works. Um, and wherever that appears, it sort of works because it's picking up that background colour. So I'm, I'm fine with that. So I hope if you've had a go at drawing this along with me, you're going to have a go at adding colour. The bird, I think, is going to be the interesting bit. I now need to go and find some masking fluid or something I can use to mask off those little bits. No, not masking film. That, that works well, I think, for um, airbrushing. I'm not airbrushing anything. Um, I've sometimes thought about learning how to airbrush, but the fuss and kerfuffle with it, with masking layers, and oh, my head would be shot. I have enough trouble working with layers in digital art, let alone anything else. So, thank you for joining me. As I've said, I hope you've enjoyed doing this. Um, my next problem after the bird is going to be leaves, flowers. Yeah. Making sure those colours tie in. So there's a good chance that I'll be using the colours I've got here, perhaps to mix in with others to create colours that will go harmoniously with the all. I don't know yet. Maybe I'll just leave them black and white and have a brightly coloured bird on there as the focal point. I don't know. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your day. And there won't be another video until Monday, most probably. So um, I shall see you then in my next video, whenever it's about there. Until then, look after yourselves and find time to be creative. Goodbye for now. Bye. Well...